pyogenic granuloma, we'll come to this also another time as well, of pyogenic granuloma. So think about now connected tissue, the way it reacts to irritation. Okay, connected tissue. What does connected tissue have? It has blood, vessels, collagen, right? That's what it has. What, how can it react? It could either react with a fibrous tissue, right? Fibromas. So it just makes more collagen. Or it could react with a granuloma. Let's bring more white cells and more vessels. So a granuloma is a reaction of the connective tissue. That's what it is. And, and the way it's doing it is it's going to bring more white cells and it's going to make more vessels. So it's going to look reddish, it's soft, it bleeds easily. A fibroma, let's make more collagen. Firm, the color looks similar to the adjacent color. That's what a fibroma. So that's how connective tissue will react to irritation, because that's the components of a connective tissue. It has collagen and it has vessels, and it brings um, either makes more of the collagen or brings more blood and more white cells to the area. Okay? So this is a pyogenic granuloma. So a granuloma is happening here on the gums. It's a connective tissue reaction to some minor trauma that's happening here. Maybe bacteria, maybe plaque. They're not, they haven't figured out a specific thing yet which provides a pathway for invasion of non-specific types of organisms. There's something here some, that's causing irritation. It happens to happen on the lower tongue, but mainly on the gingiva, and the connective tissue reaction. Now, the term pyogenic is not the best term, but that's, they stuck with it. The term pyogenic means that it's pus, but it's a wrong term, but the, the, just, that's it. We're used to the name now, so we're not going to change it. So pyogenic granuloma. Presents as a soft, pedunculated, so it has a stalk, like a little neck, broad base growth that has a smooth red surface. Often ulcerated, bleeds easily, raspberry light appearance. Okay, so I look like this and I go, what is that? Oh, it's red and soft, looks like a granuloma. The same way the granuloma happens in the apical area. What's the difference? Same thing. Just that one, you don't see it, you see it on the radiograph. Right? Mm -hmm. So, connective tissue reacts with a granuloma, or Fibrous, more fibrous. Bone does the same thing, but it has a little extra trick because it's bone. It could calcify more. Or it could resorb and make granuloma. Right? So there's like, every tissue has a way to react. This red appearance is due to the presence of hydroplastic granulation tissue which contains many capillaries. The treatment would be to remove it. It's more, it could happen also in pregnant patients, and at that point we could call it pregnancy tumor. So, pyogenic granuloma is the same as pregnancy tumor. So, if it's more, if it happens in, uh, in pregnancy, there's more risk of it because there's hormonal change. And, and P. intermedia is a bacteria that can be in the gums and it likes hormones. Did we answer this in basic science already? P. intermedia likes to eat hormones. So, it's a more risk factor when there are hormonal changes. So what's this then? Okay, so this is a pyogenic granuloma. This is a peripheral giant cell granuloma. A peripheral giant cell granuloma. Okay, so it's a granuloma. See, that's, that's the key here. Don't let all the other words distract, distract you. It is a granuloma. A connective tissue reaction, the same way. Blood vessels, same structure. So this here could be a giant cell granuloma and you wouldn't know. It just has the same clinical appearance. It's a granuloma. Why is it called giant cell? Well, because they took a biopsy, they put it under a microscope, they found giant cells. So now they call it giant cell granuloma. A pyogenic granuloma doesn't have giant cells. A giant cell granuloma has giant cells. <laughs> See how it's simple, right? <laughs> so, why is it called peripheral? Well, because there's one that's central. So when something is in the bone, they call it central. So there's a central giant cell granuloma. And when, when, when it's on the gum, it's called peripheral giant cell granuloma. Can you find better words? Inside giant cell granuloma, outside giant cell granuloma, bony giant cell granuloma, gingival giant cell, whatever. They decide to go with central and peripheral. One is in the bone and one is on the gums. So it's simple, right? You could, from the name, you understand what it is. The name should guide you what this thing is. So unknown etiology with some dispute whether it's reactive or neoplastic. You don't know, is it a tumor or is it reaction to plaque? Most authorities believe that the peripheral giant cell granuloma is a reactive lesion to maybe irritation. It's seen exclusively in the gingiva, 
between the first molars and the incisors, lots of big range, right? <laughs> so basically the whole arch, right? Y peripheral, we just said Y peripheral. Typically present as red to blue broad-based mass. Usually bleeds easily. See more in women. Clinically, you can't distinguish it from a pyogenic granuloma. They look the same. Just histologically, you took a biopsy and you found giant cells. What are giant cells? A bunch of white cells that come together and combine in one cell, they become giants. And they have multiple nucleus and they could destroy bone. Remember osteoclasts? They destroy bone. Osteoclasts are giant cells. So that's why this lesion could be associated with bone resorption. So biopsy will provide the definitive result. So when this lesion occurs on an edentulous ridge, this is what they found, on an edentulous ridge, there's a superficial cup-shaped radiolucency. So when it's on the edentulous ridge, there's a radiolucency into the ridge. So that means it has the ability to resorb bone because it has giant cells. The other one doesn't have giant cells. So it can't resorb bone. Right? Histology, it's identical to the central giant cell granuloma. Well, that doesn't help. You have to know that one then. But it's basically, what do you think histology is going to be? It's like a granuloma but has giant cells. What's a granuloma? Vas vessels and collagen. Without even looking, right? You can know what it is. Because you know the basics. What's components of connective tissue? Proliferation of sp spindle fibroblast. Okay, that's a connective tissue component, makes sense. And a stroma containing variable amounts of collagen. Okay, that sounds like that's the only thing connective tissue has, collagen and fibroblast. Plus, giant cells are present. Okay, treatment, excision, and may recur. So it's pretty much all in the name. A granuloma, a giant cell, and it's peripheral, meaning on the lungs. 